you're gonna do it again. Happy anniversary episode. Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday dear podcast. podcast. Universe. Happy birthday to you. You can't do the harmony with me. Oh, Otherwise, sorry. it's not a harmony. It's not, it's not an easy song to sing. <laughs> Happy birthday? It's as easy as it gets. Um, hey, we've done it. We are now at our three-year anniversary of this podcast. Can you, be- can you even believe it? No. Oh. We have covered so many series and... Three years ago today, our first episode on Iron Man came out. Yeah. What do you got to say? I'm glad we're not doing Land Before Time. I'm yes. glad that we nipped that in the bud as much as uh, we love the first movie. <laughs> yeah, that was that was a fun idea, but it really didn't work out. But you got to be okay with taking a step back and looking at everything exactly. and say, let's change things a little bit. Let's change it up a little bit. So we changed it to, let's cover a movie that we love that's not part of a series, therefore we will never talk about it, because our podcast is franchise-based. Exactly. So what do we pick, but among the few most perfect movies ever to be made? Yes. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Yes. And I cannot overemphasize enough that this is a perfect movie. It really is. So perfect that i said while watching it i was like this is gonna sound bad and i don't mean this but this movie is so good i don't want to read the comic book yeah because i feel like it did it that perfectly Mm -hmm. i do want to read the comic book but i i understand the sentiment the movie is yeah uh well do you so you just want to i mean do you want to talk about uh, our podcast at all i just want to talk about this movie how fun it's been yeah We've covered some crazy series. Uh, I'm looking back, and last year, the the series that came out right after our two-year anniversary was the Before Trilogy. Nice. Which is, I think, one of our best series. I agree. Man, that... So we covered that in the spring, obviously. Yeah. That's a nice spring watch, I think. It is. It is. And it like makes new, you want to go to Europe so bad. New love. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um, then we followed that up with DC Extended Universe. Yep. Which had a lot of ups and downs. My favorite episode of that, though, is Wonder Woman 1984, where we <laughs> yeah. argue that the movie actually rules. Yeah. And still, Some I don't. People screamed. I think, besides my sister, uh, I don't think any of our other listeners agree with us on that. Oh, your sister likes it? She does like it, yeah. Cool. Yeah, she hadn't seen it, and then she, she watched it after listening or at the same time, and she was like, yeah, was, I liked it. <laughs> cool. Um, we also finally caught up to so many series and were able to start going to the theaters. Yep. So if you're a new listener, this might be a weird episode to jump in on, but hey, welcome. Yeah. Uh, we're going to be a little, little, uh, loosey goosey than normal. And if you're here because of Edgar Wright, know that we have covered the Cornetto trilogy. We have a couple years ago. Um, after that, we did the Godfather. Because I remember we really needed a break from we watching superhero We needed a hard movies. left turn. Yes. Uh, then we did the Fear Street movies. Remember that? Mm-hmm. That was fun. Our only movies that have not been released in theaters, because that is a caveat we have. But a very interesting release, story, production. Yeah. And a pretty good trilogy. Not bad. You know what we covered after that? No. Scream. Ah, that makes sense. And for Halloween, we did Chaos Walking. Uh huh. Then we did. I half watched that. We did the Keanathon. Yeah. Bill and Ted, The Matrix, and John Wick. And then we covered a crazy series. We did what people have been asking us to do for years and years and years. And we finally watched The Fast and the Furious. Again, you're welcome. And again, I'm sorry. Yes. And. You know, if you're listening to this and you are one of those people that suggested that movie, I it, it those movies, it, you are required to sign up for our Patreon. <laughs> I think we got everyone that, that suggested those movies, but if you are one and you slip through the cracks, it is an honor system, but you do have to sign up for our Patreon as little as $3 a month. That easy. 
And then last week, no, maybe a couple weeks ago, uh, we we started Star Wars. Finally, mm-hmm. we've been saving that. We're on our third year, and we're finally covering Star Wars. Yeah, I'm glad that we've waited so long. Me too. At it's the time of recording this, we have we have yet to do any of the new Star Wars movies. Yes. Um, but we've had a nice little break from that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's been a good year though. We've had we've had a quite the influx of uh, listeners. Mm-hmm. We've covered great stuff on our Patreon. Mm-hmm. Space Jam was very fun. the The sequel was bad, but a great episode. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, we're we're in a house now, and we're well. I guess we were last time too. We were. Oh yes. yeah, we were. We're uh, still yeah. in a house though. Still in a house. And we're having fun. Yep. Have had a dog since then. Lost a cat since then. Yeah. Not like physically it died, but yeah. Lots of changes. Uh, yeah. So now I guess we'll talk about Scott Pilgrim. Finally. <laughs> when, when did you first see this movie? So I saw this movie. I rented it from Blockbuster. Finally. I look over. It says six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I rented it from Blockbuster and I think it was uh within the brief time like the within the time i don't know i, I just feel like a tight amount of time where i also rented and glorious bastards and i feel like oh, i yes. might have also seen black swan but i don't think so i bring up those other two movies because those two including scott pilgrim are the only movies that i've watched twice in one day and glorious and scott pilgrim and black swan Black Swan, you watched twice in one yeah, day too. Yeah, and it is funny looking back on it. It's like, no, 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 no. Come on, guys, let's calm down. <laughs> um, but but I think that was like my, one of my big first Aronofsky films. Yeah. So it just blew my mind. Um, I mean, it's a good movie. Yeah. Just because you don't like Aronofsky now doesn't mean you yeah can't d- like something. I just from don't then. have like any interest in watching that movie ever again. Yeah, I would totally watch it again. Well, then do it. I probably will. But yeah, I watched Scott Pilgrim. I think on my laptop in my room and then it it was either a Veronica you have to watch this right now with me mm-hmm. or it was uh I watched it on my laptop again that night. Yeah. It was one of the best things I've ever experienced. <laughs> it's like finally I found it is how it felt. So this by my estimation this is your number 2 movie ever. Well, I said that it's number 1 with Lord of the Rings and there There'll Will Be Blood. Blood. Yeah. But like, like if anyone ever gave you, it, like of all those things, if anyone was ever like, I want to give Jordan a weird knickknack or something, yeah. Scott Pilgrim would maybe be the one you'd be most excited about. Yeah. I'd be pretty excited about any Lord of the Rings thing, though, yeah. too. Yeah. But there's just so much. It'd be a little more unique to uh-huh. get a Scott Pilgrim thing. Yeah. When um, did you see it? So the first time I saw it, uh, I was on tour mm-hmm. with my old band, Seons, uh, and... We were somewhere. I don't know where we were, but we were in the RV. And, you know, RVs have TVs. You watched on that tiny TV? Well, here's the thing. So this is one of Grayson's all-time favorite movies. Uh Uh-huh. And so he brought it on the tour. I would always bring movies on the tour and try to convince us to watch movies, and it was usually resounding no's. Um, Because you wanted to watch big, long, or or, or big, I always wanted to show everyone The Departed, and they never wanted to watch it. (laughs) It's a different time. Yeah. It's a different time. That's um, the guy who would watch things on a portable DVD player. It was a different <laughs> time. Um, so what's, but w- here was the rub was that the RV had to have the generator on in order to use electronics. So we'd turn on the generator and you can't hear anything like, from those tiny stereo speakers. So we watched Scott Pilgrim versus the world on that tiny screen with like, it, it was, it, it was so loud that I missed most of the dialogue, I would mm-hmm. say. Probably like 70% of the dialogue I couldn't hear. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's fine. Mm-hmm. But obviously, like, it's so small, I'm not really picking up on all the visuals and stuff. And then when I watched it years later, I was like, oh, this is w- crazy. This is so good. Um, it's like watching Arrested Development like that. You know, because this movie, every time I watch it, I find a new joke. Oh, yes. And Arrested Development's the same way. Yeah. Um, and it was just, it was just, it's funny to look back on. Yeah. Cause Grayson was pretty excited to show us. Yeah. That and sucks. he's like, we have to watch it cause we're a band. Like yeah. we have to watch this movie. And, uh, 
bad, bad first intro, but it didn't harm it because I love this movie. I can't remember uh, why I wanted to watch this movie um, uh-huh. because I, I think that I watched it. I rented it because I saw Juno around uh, like kind of around the same time. Yeah, another and, Jordan classic. Yeah, and it's it's like, oh, okay, Michael Sarah's in this. It, I think I kind of remember like a trailer. Yeah, and it had Jason Schwartzman in it. That those two together were actually like the biggest reasons why I would rent it. Yeah, but yeah, I, I just can't. I just don't really like remember this movie coming out. Well, there's a reason for that. Okay, uh, because this movie is a huge bomb. Yeah. at the box office, and it has since become a cult hit, and and. You know, so it, much so that they re-released it. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But this movie had an eighty-five million dollar budget, mm-hmm. and it made. Oh, I left my notes in my pocket. What a silly I- idea! Um, so it had an eighty-five million dollar budget, and it made thirty-two million in the U.S. and forty-nine million worldwide. What? How is that possible? Well, one of the things was. Uh, one of the one of the like the marketing executive of Universal who released this movie said that that the movie was so unique and crazy and stuff. It was it was like, and he said, and it and with with the growing like popularity of the movie, it's just obvious the movie was way ahead of its time. I I get that. I get that. Yeah. But you're a marketing executive. Market it to musicians. Market it to people who like music. Market it to people who read comic books. That it's that easy. Well, and and another quote I saw was someone being like, This movie is great and it's so good, but like how do you market this movie? Because it's all over the place. In a way that's good for the movie. Yeah. But it it is sort of And that's getting into a thing where I don't really know. But I know, because I've never tried to sell a movie. Yeah. I, it's hard enough to get people to, to me, listen to music. The, like finding an audience is not hard to me. Like to mark to who you're going to market the movie to. Yeah. To me, that's not hard. Yeah. I, I, but the how of it, I understand. Yeah. So uh, it, it, it bombed pretty bad. Uh, but yeah, this is a movie directed by Edgar Wright, who we have talked about and we love. Uh, it's written by Michael Bacall, who also wrote 21 and 22 Jump Street. Okay. And he's writing the upcoming Running Man adaption. Okay. That is supposed to be directed by Edgar Wright. I just feel like that project will eventually, you know, just go away on IMDb. Yeah. Because Edgar Wright, I mean, this is his only adaption he's done. Yeah. Unless you count him adapting a music video for Baby Driver. But. What? Because he, like, made a music video. And oh, then he's I like, what if we did this for a whole movie? I knew that. Okay. Um. So, Yeah. Um, the comic book is Brit- written by Brian Lee O'Malley, and the cinematography is by Bill Pope, mm-hmm. who is an Edgar Wright collaborator, a Wachowski's collaborator. I mean, the guy shot The Matrix. Enough said. Yeah. Um, and then this blew my mind, and I texted Grayson and I said I had no idea that this guy did the music to this, and I feel like I should have known. And he he responded with. I had no idea Who? that this guy did the music. And it makes a lot of sense. The music is by Nigel Godrich. Who's that? I'll just read you his Wikipedia Dang entry. <laughs> I knew I knew you wouldn't know, but that's okay. Nigel God Godrich is it's probably Godrick. Godrick, sure. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, is an English record producer, recording engineer, and musician. He is known for his work with the English rock band Radiohead. Oh. Having produced all their studio albums since... You know since, what's funny? Wait, I was... Wait, sorry. Having produced all their studio albums since OK Computer. Jeez. And several projects by Tom York. He is a member of Adams for Peace, which is a York project, and Ultra... Ultra Ista. Uh, he's also worked with Beck, Air, Paul McCartney, U2, R.E.M., Pavement, Roger Waters, and Arcade Fire. He is the creator of the music web series From the Basement. I gotta look this guy up because I feel like I have a picture in my head, but I just would like to know. I actually didn't recognize the picture, and it was one of those names that I had forgotten who he was. Oh yeah, I don't know. And I just saw I saw that name, and I was like, oh, and I click on it, and then it says the Radiohead thing. I'm like, so oh he's yeah, a, he's a music savant. Yeah, and I mean, when you're working with Radiohead that long, I mean, in a way, he is kind of a part of the band. Yeah, you know, because he's gonna be right in on all those decisions and helping write and stuff like that. So, uh, 
That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. But I have more on that. Uh, because I I found a I, I instead of doing my usual where I really break down like how the movie was made, I just kind of cherry picked things I liked. Fun. We're having fun. I surely didn't take notes. <laughs> I didn't either, <laughs> except for these. Um Beck wrote and composed the music played by Sex Bobomb. Okay, cool. Um the songs took two days to write and record with Beck saying that, quote, it needed to be underthought. They had to be funny, yeah. but also wanted them to sound raw like demos. He nailed it. Absolutely. Good job, Beck. Um, Brendan Canning and Kevin Drew of Broken Social Scene wrote all the songs for Crash and the Boys. Is that the first band? That's the one that's so like, we sad. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, Metric is the inspiration for the film's band, The Demon or the Clash at Demon Head, okay. and contributed the song Black Sheep to the film by request of Godrich. Okay. Uh, and Envy Adams, uh, film fashion, all like reverse influenced the comics because they hadn't he hadn't written the last graphic novel when this movie. Oh, really? Was coming out, and so he kind of saw what they did, and he he didn't want to take the stuff that they did in the movie. But, but he, he was just like, that's too good, or I guess I so, can't imagine yeah. it any other way. That's interesting. Um, the song performed by Matthew Patel mm -hmm. was written by Dan the Automator and performed by Satya uh, uh, ba 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 Baba uh, in the film. Cool. And so that's all the music credits. What? I just love this movie. <laughs> it's so good. Well, and what's what's also what's also crazy is so Edgar Wright and Godrich. Were, would like meet and scout bands uh, while they were writing the movie. Cool. Well, while Edgar and because Edgar also is on the screenplay, um, and then uh, the the crew, or, I mean Michael, Sarah, and some of the other people did stunt training with Brad Allen and Peng Zhang from Jackie Chan's team. Nice. Uh, the movie comes out August thirteenth, two thousand ten, and then finally, um. Oh, which one should I end on? Hmm. I'll talk about the effects supervisor. So, uh, Fraser Churchill uh, was saying why the movie was difficult okay. to do these effects. And he said some of the work was more complex because of a shooting ethic of rights, that there should be a physical representation of any post production effects, saying that whatever the image. Whenever the image flashes in the finished shots, every punch, sword clash, or something, there are actually flashes on set with flash oh, wow. bulbs. And then they add flash with CG. When someone dies and bursts into coins, they would empty buckets of silver mylar so the actors had something to react to. Okay. So Wright was very adamant about, yes, this is going to be so CGI heavy, but let's make sure there's like practical elements to it. That's interesting. Um. And then I'll end on this, and this ties in with Inglorious Bastards. Huh? Uh, the credits of this movie, where it shows the actors at the beginning uh -huh. and the music's playing, um, they were going to do that at the end of the movie. Uh -huh. And it was uh, going to start with them in the living room okay, playing music. And a Tarantino saw a cut of the movie, and he said, this movie's crazy and cool, but I think you need something that sets the tone so that people are like prepared for what this movie does afterwards. You're saying the opening credits? That's what the, you said? The opening credits, okay. yeah. yeah. And so then they put the credits at the beginning because of a suggestion by Tarantino. Oh, cool. Yeah. So they weren't going to do that. Yeah, they were going to put them at the end. That's cool. Yeah. So uh, I think Tarantino, good tip. I mean, take it from someone who really sets crazy tones. I mean Seriously. that's that's one of his strongest suits. So that's that's what I got for you on the making of Scott Pilgrim. Okay, in terms of actors, if my phone will load, Michael Sarah plays Scott Pilgrim. You might have also seen him in Juno, Super Bad. Uh 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 what? Arre oh yeah, he's in Arrested Development and then he's <laughs> just in a ton of movies and TV. Yes. As we know. Mary Elizabeth Winstead We've not covered her. We have on Birds of Prey. Okay. Uh, Kieran Culkin. That's right, guys. He's a Culkin. Everyone knows now. But yeah. when I first saw this movie, I did not know that. Right. And uh, I can't remember if I, like, you know, I love this movie so much. I was, like, looking stuff up. 
Uh-huh. And then that's when I found out, or if it was like on my third or fourth viewing of this movie, and it like blew my mind. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that was seriously when I was like, there's more. I did not know <laughs> yeah, that yeah. there were more. And he's one of my favorite parts of the movie. Um, oh, yeah. He's so sardonic. It's hilarious. Yeah. So, guys, Kieran Culkin, he's succession. Roman in succession. I'm not even going to go over anything else. That's said. We're having fun on this app, okay? Anna Kendrick, pitch perfect. She's She plays cups. Oh. <laughs> yeah, in pitch perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Allison Pill plays Kim, the drummer. Oh, yeah. Um, She is in Milk, Dan in Real Life. She's in Picard. Whoa. So many things. I, I remember her watching her for, since being a kid. I feel like I, I'm sh- maybe I have, but I don't know that I've seen anything else with her. You might have, and you just don't. I don't know. Yeah. For me, I have. Well, um, she has a very unique look in this movie that I could see me seeing her in something else and not recognizing. Yeah. Aubrey Plaza. Uh-huh. Plays Julie Powers. Uh, Parks and Rec. Yeah. She, I guess that uh, when they were cast her like she hadn't even done parks and rec yeah. yet and then by the time they finished this movie like she was just kind of a hit by then crazy yeah uh jason schwartzman guys rushmore enough said well i just i just gotta take a, a quick oh okay. on the brakes he's one of my faves if i if a movie's coming out and jason schwartzman's in it if paul dano is in it my ticket is sold. I uh-huh. don't even know what the movie needs to be. I will watch that movie. That's how much I love those two dudes. Uh, so Jason Schwartzman, Rushmore, another one of my favorite, my favorite Wes Anderson movie. Love, love him in that. And he's, you know, he's a Wes Anderson guy. Uh, uh, how many movies have you seen with Jason Schwartzman? I don't know. You said you, 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 you'd buy the ticket every time, but no, like- I. When was the last time you saw one of like a recent movie of his? Or or is he's he, in a lot of shows. Is he doing movies? I don't know. He was in Klaus, if you remember that. Oh, but I mean we was... didn't I don't think I knew that when we watched yeah. it. But um Huh. Okay. He was in the French Dispatch. Well yeah. I mean everybody. Why, and why their are you mother. gonna pick apart everything I say? No, no, no. I, that was that was not a that was not an attack. That was like a I was I was curious. Because uh, I I also feel like I never see him when I go to the theaters. Like, he's not in a trailer for movies, like, ever. Yeah. But then he shows up on Righteous Gemstones, you know? And it's yeah. like, oh, there you are well, again. Well, I watched that Bored to Death show because he was in it. I, like, didn't really know that. Oh, you've it, seen that show? I've seen some of it, yeah. Okay. Um, I, like, didn't really know who Zach Galifianakis was. Wow. Um. What a time. Anyway. Okay. Johnny Simmons plays young Neil. He is Man. in 21 Jump Street. He is the kid who's tripping, like on the internet video. Oh yeah, okay. Uh, he's also in Perks for being a wall, wall Perks of being a wallflower, <laughs> Jennifer's body, and a million other things. Um, and then Mark Weber plays Stephen Sil- uh, Stills, the front man of the band. Yeah, he is in Flesh and Blood, The End of Love, Green Room. That makes sense. Yeah, Green Room's so good. I wonder for for being in like two music heavy movies, if he has any musical affinity. Yeah, he must. Um, Ellen Wong plays Knives Chow. Uh huh. She is also in Glow, Dark Matter, Bestsellers, The Christmas Setup, among other things. Um, do we want to get into the evil exes or should we just, no, pause let's it? just talk about the movie now. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's the anniversary. We're loose. Everybody. We're so loose. Uh, so I think you got to take the charge. This is your movie. <sighs> How do we, I mean, we don't have to do the normal format. We can just bounce around and talk about what we like and yeah, I don't know. What do you want to do? Um, what is the first shot of this movie? Isn't it always, it's like, no matter how many times you see a movie, if you're talking about it, it's like a dream. It's like recalling a dream sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Well, it does start with the Universal logo in the 8-bit format, mm-hmm. and the it's doing the song, but in 8-bit, like Nintendo. Oh, I'll say my my huge flame and hot opinion on this movie. Um, I think, and stand by, this is the not only the best video game movie because it has a video game vibe and it follows mm-hmm. like video game rules. Uh, this is the best comic book movie. Mm-hmm. 
And I agree. the only number two I would think of that's even close to comic book movie would be uh, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yeah. Because it feels like both those movies really take the form of comic book and like run with them. Yeah. And that's why they're so exciting. And they're also great stories and all that. Yeah. Whereas a lot of other comic books adaptions say, how can we make this not like a comic book? Yeah. Which is a different approach. But these are the two best adaptions. Without a doubt. And and Spider-Verse is pretty close because I mean what a crazy movie. But I think I think Edgar I think Edgar might beat him out with this one. So you know what I thought of with this movie? One reason why it's so good among a million. The the first chunk of it, like the first act, it just they really let it breathe. Uh huh. we it the movie's very quick. Don't yeah. blink, because you might miss it. But by by the time he fights the first evil ex, so much has happened. Oh yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like we we have time to really sit in this nerdy dude who's kind of like he's 22 years old yeah he's trying to figure life out but he kind of is a loser uh-huh. dating a 17 year old so he's a scummy loser uh-huh. and then and then he finds this girl that he thinks he's in love with and then and then and then he's like kind of gross about all that stuff yeah and then we get the evil ex like with our sweet yeah there's just, we learned so much and and one of the one of the best parts about the movie is there there is no attempt at any point for there to be any amount of realism in it. No. And I I love that. I I saw that that the fight scenes Edgar Wright um he he kind of his thought process behind it was you know when you see a movie with Gene Kelly and he does this crazy dance number. And then it ends. People don't go up to him and they go like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe you did that. That was so insane. They just are like, OK, cool. What's the next thing? And so he took that approach oh, where it's cool. like, oh, you know, huge fight. And then people aren't like, I didn't know you could fight or whatever. They're just like, OK, like, are you going to make it to band practice? You know, uh, yeah. yeah, that's and awesome. I think that's sort of like the what are the, like the key to this yeah, movie. Like in if a lot that wasn't part of it, I think there would be a lot of like just having to explain the movie would have yeah. to explain itself the whole time. Yeah. And it would just get boring. And it's some of the most inventive editing in a movie. Yeah. That's, that's what Edgar Wright, he is like, well, he's like the, the master, the yeah. master of that. All right. I stole it out of your mouth. No, it's okay. It's just like, he, he is so crazy, but it, I just would love to know when he's like writing something or getting ready to direct something, just like how he approaches that what he's thinking about because because it's like some of it especially with this movie it's like how did you not get like so disorganized you didn't even like this was a disaster yeah i'm sure i mean this movie for sure just hun thousands of storyboards yeah thousands and then and then i would think that that with every movie he makes it is like so storyboarded yeah so that right at the get-go it's like before we're even filming the movie's edited yeah, head. I, and I know most movies, I, if you know most movies storyboard, that's pretty normal. But um, I think there's an added layer to 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 this with him because it's so kinetic. I don't know how you could get there with with just getting footage or or improvising and changing stuff. You yeah. Know? So it's it's crazy. Yeah, it, it is. So so he. Like I like we said, he's he's dating this high school girl. Yeah, and not only that, they haven't held hands. Yeah, well, they haven't held hands. They haven't done. Well, they're like, so have you like done anything with her? Oh, we well, we've gone to the library. She talks about her friends, <laughs> about classes, and then, but we find out like not only is it just a high school girl, it's a, a Chinese girl that goes to a Catholic school and wears a uniform. Like yeah. she she is a fetish. Yeah, and it's it's just like. People are just like, you suck, dude. Uh You're disgusting and you're going to break this girl's heart. And especially when like the first time she comes over, which is when we get the opening credits. Yeah. Um, First of all, the music, like we said, is so good. But yeah, all the music rules. It's a great, it's great. It's so good. Um, And I've always, always loved with that. She's like, we are sex bomb. One, two, two three, four. four. But yeah, so af- after the practice, they're all talking at like, what did you guys think of her and everything? It's like, yeah, she's pretty cool. She seems cool. And then um, 
her the I can't remember the drummer's name. Yeah. But she's just like, you suck. Yeah. Do you, do you have any idea what you're doing? And then Scott just says, oh, so uh, you you were saying Neil, you were saying that he, she she was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just yeah. like completely ignores. I wanted I wanted to look up some like of my favorite quotes too. Okay. When Knives comes in and she meets young Neil, and she says, "What do you play?" Zelda, Tetris. That's kind of a big question. Yeah. <laughs> so good. Oh, that. Oh, okay. I thought I you mean, were going to go list throughout. off. No, that. just throughout. Yeah. So they they're practicing. They're in a band. Knives is there, and then he has this dream sequence where he sees Ramona Flowers skate through his dreams, mm-hmm. and then the time shifts are just crazy. Like where yeah. he. You know, he's he he wakes up and he goes, it's, you know, it's 6 p.m. or whatever. And then he's like, no, you were supposed to take knives to the library. And he opens the door and it's bright outside. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, who knows? It's been days. It's uh, like, yeah. there's no sense of, like, the time is, it's more complicated than a Christopher well, Nolan movie. I kind of movie. feel like that's, like, what it is like to be a 22-year-old. Yeah. Like, no, it's... It's incredible. And they don't even at any point like make a big point. Like I don't even know if anyone went to college. I have no idea what people's situations are. Yeah. Which I think is like fine and great. Yeah. Because it's like these people are in a weird young adult phase where they're like either done with college or they didn't go to college, but they're still young enough to have this dream of a band. Like like this kind of dream that they do have, if you know yeah. what I mean. And Yeah, it's dumb no, to no, have I a don't dream that. as a band. Yeah, I don't mean that in a derogatory way at all or anything but it's like that's all you do because that's all you get to do like that's the fun of being that age yeah and i just feel like there's not a lot of responsibility surrounding these people Uh uh-huh and then yeah i don't know it's just great well it's also i feel like this this movie captured the pre-cell phone teenage experience yeah but post 90s yeah um, because I, it just feels like when I watch this movie, it, it does feel like I'm a teenager mm-hmm. and, or, or I'm just out of high school. Like it, it captures that, that young person vibe that, that, you know, in the same way that Dazed and Confused captures that vibe as yeah. well. Like there's just movies sometimes that go, oh, it just perfectly encapsulates an experience. Yeah. And, and even though this movie's just like crazy and all over the place in all the right ways. It, it captures that experience and just that even even the the premise of it which goes to the the comic books of of being intensely falling in love with someone that you just saw mm-hmm. and then you know it's like now i have to battle their seven evil exes okay here we go mm-hmm. you know oh well i this is what i do now whatever mm-hmm. yeah just a part of my life yeah it, it, this like the the story itself seems so almost simple that it's like, how come no one's done this yet? Yeah. Kind of feeling of a story about people's baggage. Yeah. Man. But uh, then what happens after that? Well, I, so him and like, so it does show him and Knives Nate hanging out and they're, they're talking about music. They're at a music shop and she says that she loves the Brie Larson band. Yeah. And he, he's like, we can't listen to them. And then he's like, so we were talking about me. Yeah. It's just all about Scott all the time. And he, he loves, I think, you know, the biggest thing he likes about this girl is she's like, he looks up to him. He looks up to him. You are so cool. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, also in, in true Edgar Wright fashion, like they play the ninja game Mm -hmm. at the beginning, which kind of is like, here's why he's so good at fighting and, and setting up like the end where they have to fight together and stuff like that. You know, cause Edgar Wright movies always do that where they yeah. kind of set up stuff that you didn't know he was setting up. Yeah. And then you rewatch it and you're like, oh, that commercial explained the plot of the movie or whatever. Right. Um, he, lo- he can't resist it. Yeah. He's always doing it. Um, the, the girl who plays Knives Chow is so good. Oh, it's at crazy. Playing a high schooler especially and she's older than michael sarah which is funny yeah that is funny and like when they're in the library and he says something like i don't think i've been in a library since elementary school or something like that and she's like that must feel like a really long time ago yeah. but she like truly means it she's not making him feel old or not trying to yeah um <laughs> <laughs> so he sees ramona in the flesh at the library and he's like oh my gosh she exists yeah. And she she rolls away on her rollerblades. Right. And 
soon after he finds out about a party that Julie's having. Yeah. And Ramona might be there. And that's the only reason he goes. Yeah. And then, you know, he meets her there. He's very awkward with her. And then he find he he then he like orders a package. Um because she works at Amazon. Yeah, and and he gets the email, which is this is one of the funniest lines of the movie. Uh -huh. Where he gets an email and then he's like, dude, I got an email. And then he turns over his shoulder and he's like, dude, I'm reading it now. <laughs> <laughs> and his delivery's crazy. I know. And then he's reading it and it's from uh, Matthew Patel uh -huh. and it's saying like you have to fight the the guild of evil exes and all that stuff and then he goes this is so and it's flashing words duel fight death. to the death stuff like that <laughs> boring <laughs> delete <laughs> delete <laughs> and then he gets the package he waits by the door it's another uh -huh. time thing where we, it's like was he was he there for a minute or four days or... but also who, who doesn't matter yeah it's just i just love the 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 movie is very very disorienting yeah um and again that's one of the the endearing qualities about it mm -hmm. but yeah he he gets mary elizabeth or ramona to go to hang out with him yeah and they just they're walking i i love too that when they like when he meets her meets up with her and he's like oh, you're just standing here? And she said, dude, I'm totally waiting on you. And he's, yeah, he's like, like, oh, I just assumed you were too cool to be on time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I like, there's a couple moments like that with her where it's like people assume something about her. It's little things like that because she is so cool. Yeah. And she's just like, no, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I'm a reliable person. Yeah. Just a nice person over here. Um, yeah. So let's talk about the first uh, battle. Okay. Um. The 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 band plays mm -hmm. and uh, he does the like I am so sad song which is like two seconds long mm -hmm. and then he, and the the uh, their Michael or Scott's band's freaking out because they have a girl drummer and they have a girl drummer yeah and then and then Kieran Culkin keeps on heckling them and then he goes this song is dedicated to the guy in the balcony it's called um oh crap what's it called the cold i hate you or i i hate you please die yeah and then they play the song <laughs> um <laughs> which is a great rebuttal to a heckler i gotta say yeah. um uh yeah so that that happens and then they're getting ready to play and then matthew patel shows up and i remember when i saw it the first time i was like crying laughing at this scene yeah in the rv yeah in the rv wow because he shows up and he's he's so theatrical, he's so theatrical. <laughs> the bi the way he points his finger is so funny. He, yeah, he is he's so just good. so good. And and you know he's explaining the thing and and he goes, I I thought I I thought you got the email. He goes, Yeah, I didn't read it. You didn't read the email and stuff. And then he breaks out into this song, <laughs> and it sounds pretty bad. And it's and it's so silly. But he has like demon girls yeah, that yeah. are like singing behind him. And it's doing this kind of Bollywood esque like, dance, <laughs> yeah. And then he gets him, punches him, and he turns into coins. And then my one of my favorite lines is he goes, "Oh, sweet coins." <laughs> but it, but the, and he goes, the it's not even enough to get yeah. a bus fare. <laughs> so he, they're turning into coins, yeah, which is the single greatest like video game adaption. It's so satisfying ever, yeah. Um, I mean, especially at the end when he punch and when he kicks Gideon and you see him slowly turning into coins. Well, he's like coughing out coins too. Yeah. It's great. It's so good. And the, another hilarious Kieran thing is he steals Anna Kendrick's boyfriend by the end of the night. <laughs> and it's just so funny because she's like, not again. Yeah. <laughs> and then who's, who's evil X number two? Um, is that Chris Evans? Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yeah, what a way to intro a character. They, they, Kieran says, "Oh, this guy's gonna be here." And I'm gonna stalk him later. I'm gonna stalk him later, and then it cuts to the TV, and you see him in a phone booth on TV, and he's like, "The next two clicks are gonna be me hanging up the phone, and then me pulling the trigger." And then it cuts to Scott, Scott, and he's in a phone booth, and he's in like this nervous position where he's talking to knives, and he still hasn't broken up with her yet. Uh huh. And then she shows up, and yeah. she's there. And then eventually they go to see Chris Evans, and 
And this is one of those funny things where... Well, this where... is after the whole bread thing. That's one of the oh, other best yes. lines. Yeah. Okay, well, he... he Does he, he actually break up with knives? I don't... Does no. He... So, but like he's at that at the music store again with knives. Yeah. And she says, I'm in love. And I just... The, and he the bats the, he he bats like the bats word bats away. A, bats the word away like it's like, oof, stuffy. Like stinky. Um, yeah, he has another date with Ramona. And when... Kieran leaves. He says, see in 60 minutes when you strike out. Uh-huh. And at end 60 minutes, they're there with him at the Chris <laughs> Evans thing. But before that, uh, he makes Ramona dinner and all he makes is garlic bread. And yeah. he says, garlic bread is my favorite mo- food. I could literally eat it all the time. Like breakfast, lunch, and dinner. I, w- I would never stop eating it. And she's like, well, you get fat. What, what are you talking about? Bread makes you fat. Bread makes you fat? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. And so he, then they go, like, I think this Chris Evans thing, at the, you know, at the time he had been, uh, uh, he had been. The Flaming Torch. The, the, the Human Torch. The Human Torch. <laughs> um, and then I this year he would become Captain America in 2010. Okay. But this cameo feels funnier now that yes. he has and is. Captain America and this larger than life he a list actor now yeah it's like so much funnier even now so he's this kind of B like Steven Seagal type actor in this movie mm-hmm. and but he says later he talks on like this and stuff that he's, like that I'm going for the Oscar this year yeah <laughs> it's like in what world would you win an Oscar yeah. and then he has a skating company and he pulls down his shirt uh-huh. and he has a tattoo of a skating company. And you know he uh, Scott <laughs> fights the stuntmen. <laughs> but he yeah. introduces like eight stuntmen. Yeah, and Kieran is standing right next to Scott with his coffee, so casual, and says, "Hey, ask him what he thinks about getting a sloppy seconds." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then he just saunters off. <laughs> <laughs> so he fights them for a while, and then eventually, with Chris Evans, he just challenges him to do a skateboarding trick, mm-hmm. and he and he's doing the. Do you he's, do you really think that you could get me on on just chickening out like get, yeah get goading me, just, me into doing this yeah and he he does like the longest grind ever done and yeah. he goes so fast that he explodes <laughs> yeah and that's how he wins turns into coins yeah um so that's the Chris Evans one yeah number three yeah is, is the ba- I know it's the bass player but I thought he was four no because number four shows oh, up and attacks yeah. Scott but then number three happens Mm -hmm. so take it so number three is uh superman uh oh yeah from from one of the shows or something right i thought he was in one of the movies oh i think it is i think it is uh the water bottle's way behind you (laughs) uh what's so weird is i've seen that movie for some reason uh don't remember anything other than that guy is superman yeah i have not seen that movie i've seen uh I've seen, of course, the DC Superman movies. Yep. And I've Super seen... Super satin. I've seen Superman 1, Superman 2, and I think half of Superman 3. And then I turned off Superman 3. Well, anyway, really bad. this guy... Yeah. He... His powers are explained. He might be the only one where his yes. powers are explained. Yes. He is powerful, uber powerful, because he is a vegan. And if you don't eat anything with a face at all... You were granted powers, and he yes. went to vegan school, and everything. Vegan Academy. Vegan Academy, and he's date- now dating Envy Adams. Yes, um, Scott's ex girlfriend who dumped him. <laughs> yeah, played by Brie Larson, and their song is good. Their song's really. I good. I really like their song. Hello, Dana, 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 Dana. It's good. Da, da, da. And but it's like a legit song. I mean, that's what helps with all these songs is they're they're real songs. Yeah, that's true. Um, so before they start fighting, though, so throughout all of this, Knives is still obsessed with Scott. Yeah. But she's like, okay, well, if he likes Ramona, I'm going to be as cool as Ramona. She dyes like half of her hair, gets a, hair, gets a haircut. And they look so good. Cool. Oh, good. Oh, no, I th- maybe she said cool. Um, but she... But she also was like a huge fan of Envy Adams. And yeah. she is like, oh, I kissed the lips that's, that's kissed your lips. And <laughs> yeah, Superman yeah, yeah. gets up and punches her in the face. 
what? I'm not afraid to hit a girl. <laughs> <laughs> and the, he punches the highlights out of her hair and young Neil is holding her as she's like dead, basically. Yeah. And he's like, he punched the highlights <laughs> out of her hair. And they they like they splash blue paint on the uh-huh. set. <laughs> it's so good. Um, so they, they fight. Scott doesn't really have a chance at all. No. And it's not looking good for him. No. Um, but this guy, while a vegan, while hot, is dumb because um, of his fun, du- his funny dusting joke with the maid. <laughs> yeah. But um, she does. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Scott bests him by giving him a celebratory coffee for beating him. And his coffee, Superman's coffee, had half and half in it. So he yeah. broke the vegan code. The vegan police. Guys, this movie the has vegan the vegan police. police. Played by two actors that I don't know their names. Tom like, Jane Tom and Jane. Uh, I don't know the other guy's name. Huge. huge like, what the, one of the craziest cameos. I know. And they're the vegan police. And Superman's like, well, do, isn't there like a three-strike rule? This is just a one-time thing. They flip out a notebook. And they say a date that you ate this thing. And I forget gelato. What was, gelato. And he's like, gelato's not vegan. And he That's says, milk and eggs, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he had chicken parmesan and everyone gaps. And he says, chicken's not vegan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and they zap his, suck his powers out. Uh. So they take away his vegan powers. And, and then so, the funniest thing happens. Scott, Scott beats him. Uh-huh. And then the vegan police, they're, the dudes are, running through the hole in the wall that they created and they jump up and go yeah and high five and high five it's crazy and it's all in like super slow motion it's so funny it's one of the best and then after that he fights the fourth one which is uh ann from arrested development yeah and every time we watch the movie i always go her (laughs) and it's always pretty funny yeah and uh and this is when like before that, she keeps saying no, my evil exes. Every time he's like, "You're yeah. seven boyfriends," yeah. and then and then right before she attacks, he goes, he goes, "Why do you keep saying that?" And then she slams him against <laughs> the table, and then she's like, "Scott Pilgrim," <laughs> and then this- but he he doesn't want to hit a girl, right? Right. Well, so remote. This is this feels like to me the moment in the video game where he's beaten three bosses and he gets like a partner now like he levels up yeah because ramona takes this giant like cartoon level hammer out yeah. of her bag and is fighting the girl yeah um but she can't do anything about it it has to be scott who beats her but so then she like jumps behind him and uses his body to fight him yeah to fight her yeah it's so funny mm-hmm. and then he's on the ground and she's about to kick him mm-hmm. and then she goes her weak point is her knee and he touches her knee and she explodes, explodes into <laughs> coins. <laughs> and I think what, yeah, then they're, they're fighting now. Yeah. It is like, what, why am I doing this at this point? Do I really like you that much? All those kinds of things. He, he orders himself two gin and tonics against drunk on them and like immediately. Yeah. Which is very funny to me. Um, so they're, they're kind of on the outs. Uh huh. But doesn't mean the exos are going to not, doesn't mean that they're going to stop coming for him. Yeah. And so, um, then, you know, there, there's a lot of great character development and stuff, but yeah. it's kind of more fun to just talk about the exes because this is our fun episode. Yeah. But then there's the huge, uh, band battle at yeah. the end. And, uh, it's, it's an amp versus amp stage. Mm-hmm. And there's the something twins. Patty a doggy or something. Okay. I didn't say it. Correctly. And they're like DJs, mm-hmm. and then there's the Scott. Oh, we didn't mention that that Scott and uh, I think his name is Brandon Routh, uh, Superman, have a base battle. They do have a base battle. And I was reminded by patron and friend Josiah Oliveira by reading his Doctor Strange review. He said uh, the second best musical fight, like musical note fight, right after Scott Pilgrim with the base battle. Yeah. Um, which I, I think I would agree with. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so they they do that, and I, I just love that scene. It's so cool. It's so good. And so then these these bands fight. And well, it's before that, they're, before the battle, I think it's the front man of Scott's band. You know, he always yeah. is trying to figure out the other bands, like a coach. Yeah, yeah. And they have, like, a diagram of, like, two, both the twins. And I think you caught it where it says 
like one of their two of their att- attributes are they're Japanese and they're perfect and they're hot. Like, handsome. like they're just they're handsome, handsome and they're perfect. Yeah, those are like <laughs> things he's noting yeah. about them. <laughs> Um, and then with their DJ powers, they're able to create this huge monster. Two dragons. Two dra- Oh, yeah, two dragons. And then Scott Pilgrim, once they get blown away, they, like, turn on the fuzz, and then they create a huge monster, and they fight. Yeah. And eventually gets him. Yeah. Th- meanwhile, also, throughout the whole movie, there's, like, crazy subtitles. There's verses mm-hmm. that pop up. Um, there's a P bar when he goes to the bathroom. Mm-hmm. There's all this insane stuff that, that elevates it to this where even though this is not based on a video game, I'm saying this is the best video game movie. Mm -hmm. All that happens, beat him. Yeah. And then Gideon's there. Yeah. And now Ramona's with Gideon. Yeah. And... But but before she leaves, Scott tells her, I'm in lesbians with you. Yes. And then when she walks away, he says... He says lesbians. Yeah, because earlier in the movie... Kieran had said, you, I think you might have to drop the L word with her. Mm-hmm. And he goes, lesbian? And he goes, not that one. And he goes, lesbians? <laughs> so it's a pretty good payoff to a joke yeah. that happened like 40 minutes earlier. Yeah. Um, a joke that was already pretty funny. Yeah. And then it has like a legit payoff. Yeah. And then uh, they, so we find out Gideon also has like a chip on Ramona. <laughs> he can that he control controls her. her. And a nice... Uh, and you know Edgar, he's tuned into the music. When he pulls up in his uh, uh, his limo. limo, the music being played is I think it's the Rolling Stones, but it's yeah. under my thumb. Yeah, as as they're discussing how she has like no power when she's around him. Also, I think it means that now the band is under his thumb. It's just the whole yeah. all of it because they the band signs a contract to be part of his label, but Scott doesn't, so Scott's not in the band anymore. Young Neil is now the bassist. I, I mean, I think. Uh, I think Edgar Wright is like the best at doing that kind of stuff. What kind of stuff? Just just doing those little, you know, like the green light in the Great Gatsby. Like he's so good at taking oh, poetic yeah. things, and and they're usually pretty obvious. And and I think someone who's less good than him might do something like that, and it would feel kind of annoying. Yeah, but. He, and he's just screaming at you like themes and and like where movies like his movies are going like the whole time. Yeah, you know, I mean, the, my favorite example is freaking uh, Shaun of the Dead when they're at the bar and he describe like Nick Frost is like, you know what? Let's get drunk tonight and describes the entire plot of the movie. Mm-hmm. But it's but it's all these like drinking slangs that turn out to be how he how they how they fight end up the zombies up, yeah. and how they, you know it's. Uh, he's so good Simon I, si- not Simon Pegg Simon Pegg's, Simon so Pegg's good. good too but uh Edgar Wright is just a whole other caliber and you know what must I say this if you did not get a chance to see Last Night in Soho you gotta watch yeah. Last Night in Soho it didn't do so well at the box office but that movie's really good yeah that was like my fourth what favorite movie with, of the year with him like why is it so hard I don't know because his movies just often don't do well well, but the Cornetto trilogy movies yeah, was, did great, and Baby true. Driver did cr- like way better than anyone oh, okay. thought it was gonna do. Okay, I think I, I'd have to look at the numbers, but I wonder if Baby Driver did so well that they okayed a bigger budget than okay, like thinking, oh, everyone who saw Baby Driver will see this. And not everyone did. Yeah, but he's he's so he's so he's just kinetic and energetic. Yeah, and he has heard my music. Yeah. Because uh, for those who don't know, last year I submitted a Plug Bags theme song to my favorite podcast, Comedy Bang Bang, and it played on an episode that Edgar Wright was on. Mm -hmm. And that was like, okay, I'd like to be further along in my music career, but I'm going to take that. That's That's a a milestone. That's a pretty big win. Yeah. Um, So, uh, Gideon fight, are we there yet? Band gets signed. Yeah. Yeah. and then Scott is going to go take him on. Yeah. Well, well, Scott's moping around at home. He has earned a life w- uh, by fighting the twins. He got a life. Yeah. But he's moping at home, and Kieran is tr- kicking him out. And he's like, go stay with Ramona. He's not with Ramona anymore. Gets him some hot chocolate. He's being a good roommate, but also trying to kick him out. Uh-huh. And he gets a call from Gideon. Uh-huh. And Gideon is like, like you know, I, I'm actually thankful for you, because if not for you, I wouldn't have gotten Ramona back. Like, all that BS. Yeah. And then... 
uh i think scott asks like is she there and he's like yeah she's she's with me and then he screams on the phone and he's like oh come on buddy it's okay he's like no i just spilled hot chocolate on my crotch yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and um kieran's listening to the to the call and at the end he's like you know what screw everything i said go get him yeah so he goes to the club he goes to the the first uh dude that needs a pass first bouncer and he says password what whatever whatever all right cool gets to the next two bouncers password (sighs) and gets through and then at right at the beginning of this shot and this party uh the guy who he's in the office but he's in a lot of stuff um he's he's saying something about he He says says, two different things he says he says um the comic book's way better than the movie. He says that the second time, and then the first time he goes, he <laughs> says, um, uh, the band's first album is better, better than-, than the first album. <laughs> and and he says it in a way like, oh, I I didn't mean to say that, but I, I actually don't know anything. Because he kind of like says it defeated like. It's so good. Um, so Scott comes in, and the band sees him, and and the front man's like, "Dude, don't ruin this for us." Yeah, we're playing the show, and they're all dressed up different than they've been. Yeah, that's you know. a gimmick now. Yeah, and he, you know, he says, "I'm gonna fight you," and they begin fighting. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, go ahead. No, it's, that was fine. Uh, well, he he declares that he is going to fight Gideon. And he's gonna run up the stairs. Gideon stops him. What if him. I want the satisfaction? What if I want the satisfaction? A, if- a very common thing to see Jordan do is yeah. tap her chest lightly like that and say that. Yeah, <laughs> that's one of my favorite lines. And uh, he he proclaim proclaims his love for Ramona, and he gets the power of love. Yeah, and the pulls sword, out that sword, the, the samurai sword, and pink flames comes out of his chest. Yeah, and then he starts fighting Gideon. Well, his, all of Gideon's goons start fighting him. So yeah, he, he's he, he, taking people down left and right. Coins are everywhere. And there's some, I, I was trying to figure this out last night, and maybe someone listening will understand, but there's something about the weight and the quickness of the movements with the sword that's so satisfying. Yeah. Coupled with people exploding into coins. Yeah. Um, It's good. I don't know, because it feels like the sword does have weight, but it... It's swift. It's Yeah, I love it. Yeah. I love it. And then he runs up the steps. He fights him. He's bested. Well, Knives shows up. She, okay, she shows up. Knife shows at, up, and okay. she's coming after Ramona. So they're fighting while Gideon and Scott are fighting. Yeah. And then uh, Scott says, wait, stop, to Ramona and Knives. And yeah. he is honest with me. He said, Knives, I cheated on you with Ramona. I kind of cheated on Ramona with Knives. Like, he he kind, he half yeah. admits to doing something wrong. Um, and then Gideon stabs him. He's dead. He's in the desert in the afterlife. Yes. And he's defeated. Earned an extra life. But he has, a, he has an extra life, and he decides to take it. Yes. So then he comes in. He he just kills the people who ask for the codes. Mm-hmm. Same thing happens. Oh, but uh, before before he fights him, excuse me, the first <laughs> time, uh, the drummer goes, we are sex bob We're here to sell out and uh, or we're here to make money and sell out. And she's flipping him off as she's saying it. Yeah, and then um, this time she goes, we're here to see Scott Pilgrim kick Gideon's ass yeah. or something <laughs> along those lines. And uh, he fights again and then he, what does he say? Because then it's Scott earned the power of self-respect. Yes, that's what it was. He's but, like, I'm not fighting for her. I'm fighting for me. Yeah. Yeah. And then he fights him. Knives comes down. This time he just admits that he was wrong f- to both of them. Yes. And he's he should have been better. And then him and Knives together fight Gideon. And then yeah. they make a great team. You made me swallow my gum! <laughs> that's going to be my day tra- 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 for the for next seven, seven years! years! <laughs> <laughs> so good. And uh, uh, then they're, they're fighting... He eventually bests him. He bests him, and then Ramona says to Knives and Scott, you guys make a great team. The day's been good. The The band just lost their contract, though, so the front band's just scooping up coins. Yeah. Because <laughs> the drummer's like, well, there goes our deal. Really? Are you serious? There goes our deal. <laughs> Start <laughs> scooping up coins. But uh, so everything seems to be fine, but then uh-huh. Negus Scott shows up. 
So he has yes. to fight himself. I know. This and is the like, most unbelievable Ramona thing. Ramona and Knives are ready to fight with him. He's like, no, guys, this is something I have to do. And yeah. then a hard cut to Ramona and Knives standing outside. Yeah. And then the doors are opening. We hear two Scots just talking, having a good time. He's like, yeah, they put like the bananas on the French toast. Yeah, we'll get it next week. Yeah, yeah. Okay, see ya. And then <laughs> Scott goes away. And they're like, you didn't fight? Oh, no, we just shot the shit. He was... Really He's good guy. A pretty cool guy. French next week. I love that. Yeah. And then he does wind up with Ramona. Yeah. Yes. And then the movie ends. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Pretty much. Anything else you want to say about it's it? It's hard to talk about a movie you like so much. I know. It really is. It really is. Um, well, I was thinking for funsies, it would be nice to just shout out our patrons yeah on the anniversary episode yeah so here we go thank you for supporting us thank you thank you uh joni sherman carrie tom michael combs sean muir scarlett mccaw ben wesner chad briggs kaylee lago marcino olivia stinton lauren panter shane o'hara shana brown ralph and penny green kateri warnick steven nance Mara and Jeremy Oliveira, Chloe Lindgren, Eden Ballroom, Brett Levick, Jacob Tarando. Come on, load next one. Load next one. Josiah Oliveira, Benjamin Heidegger, Lyle McCaw, Bart Pence, Jack O'Hara, Dominic Reyes, Jake Anderson, Jordan Keller. Did I already say Jake Anderson? I don't know. Uh, but either way, that doesn't change the fact that he's a patron. Uh, <laughs> Jordan <laughs> Keller, Dave Heidegger, Josh Evans, and Trevin Alger, Jessica Oliveira, Norm Halderson, Mary, Mary Lee Nance, Lily Wellburn, Sierra Holm, and Dan Eden. Woo, 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 woo! Thank you so much for supporting us. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and I think it's a good time to say that if we, we have 38 now, if we get up to 50, we're going to launch our Pixar podcast. Mm-hmm. Or we'll cover the rest of Pixar. So you'll hear us blubber over more movies we like. Yeah, but please, I want to get. Th- my goal is to get there by the end of this year, so yeah. that we can launch it. Um, What's the movie next year? Well, and then one more thing I wanted to say. Okay. Because I want to, you know, it, it, you know, maybe encourage this kind of behavior. Uh, Excuse Jake, me. <laughs> Jake Anderson stopped by and gave us Spider-Man figurines mm-hmm. and a Spider-Man video game. Mm-hmm. So just know, I mean. We're we're accepting of gifts, you know. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not required to become a patron. No, 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 no. And also, I'm kind of just saying that because you know, giving them a little credit. You oh know? yeah, they're so cool. He he gifted us that, and that was super we nice. We gotta of him. display them. We gotta figure out how to display them. Well, they're they're gonna be in our. I've been saving them. That's not a forever display. No, I know, I know. Don't I worry, guess. don't worry, folks. Don't worry. You'll see them. You'll see Venom and uh, Spider Man soon. Or wait. I thought we had the Green Goblin. Yeah, Green Goblin, Green Goblin. So what are we doing next year, you say? You told me that you knew it. Yeah, because you chose this year. Mm -hmm. So next year, I was sitting there and I was watching Doctor Strange again in theaters. Please don't pick up a Marvel movie. And I was going... That we've covered. I was going... I was looking at Rachel McAdams again. The Notebook? Oh, no, no. Oh. And I thought, let's watch Game Night, baby. Ah... Let's watch some game night. Just want you to watch the notebook sometime. I'd love to. I'd love to. Um, yeah, let's do yeah. it. Oh, and a, li- a pinch. This is it. This is it. A little Doctor Strange follow up. I don't think I told you this. Oh no, I did. But I'll tell the audience to follow up on our episode a couple weeks ago. One that planet. Jordan was right. Everyone wears a hat except for one person that I noticed. Mm-hmm. So I, it makes sense that you would think hat thing. The memory sequence, I couldn't figure out for sure if you were right, but your I, your theory makes sense huh? that he's seeing a memory of the Doctor Strange oh, okay. from that world. Okay. Um, but I couldn't tell if Rachel McAdams' hair was red because the theater was so dim. Yeah. Um, and then finally, Wanda absolutely looks directly in the camera. Yeah. Because you had said that, and I was like, "Oh, doesn't she only kind of?" And no, no, you were. She like looks directly. I also in. don't think that they would halfway do it because then everyone would be confused, and yeah. you don't want to confuse your audience. It was so great. I loved that that yeah. happened. Um, yeah. So thank you for listening. Here's thank you. Here's for three more. Mm-hmm. Wee wee.
好笑，好笑。<笑>